Hello, good evening, my friends. Welcome to another English class. Let's start. Let's see who do we have here. Vamos a ver quién tenemos por acá. So, welcome back. And here we have Evelyn. Hello, Evelyn. Good evening. How are you tonight? Uh, fine, perfect. No, thank you. Very nice. Here we have also Adi. How are you doing? Hi, good evening, teacher. Good evening. How are you doing? Excellent, perfect. Fine, thanks. Okay. Thank you, very nice. Here we have also Guillermo Eduardo. How do you feel? I feel great, teacher. Okay, that sounds really good. Rosalie, good evening. How are you doing? Good evening, teacher. I'm fine. Perfect. Okay, I like to hear that. Thank you, thank you. Gustavo, good evening. How are you doing? Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Fantastic. Thank you very much. So here we have some others. For example, Daniel. Here we have Oscar, Marita, Lucy, uh, Elias, and Doris. But uh, the topic of tonight is this. Good evening, teacher. Hello. Thank you for being here. The topic is how for obligations. That's the topic. Ese es el tema de esta noche. How for obligations. So we're going to apply the verb have to express some obligations that we have. This is the class number two. So it means we have 18 classes left. Before we start, we're going to have a memory game. Vamos a tener, pues, un juego de memoria bastante sencillo en el cual les voy a mostrar una imagen. I'm going to show you a picture. And then you tell me the words you remember. Okay? Don't, don't be tricky. Don't have screenshots, okay, or take notes. Just try to remember. Tender recordar esta imagen, okay? I'm going to present this picture for 60 seconds, okay? Try to memorize as many words as you can. Okay, let's listen to some of you. Uh, Maritza, hello. Good evening. Good evening. Mention one word from the picture. No la vi, teacher. No la vi, okay. Oscar, what about you? No te escucho. Oscar. No la, no, la pude okay. ver. no la pude ver tampoco. Ok, vamos a ver a Adi. Maybe one word. Vi una licuadora, una batidora. Lo tengo que decir en inglés. Yes. <laughs> blender. Thank you. Yeah, blender. That's okay. One word, it's okay. Perfect. What about Daniel and then Guillermo? Daniel, one word. Uh, I see electric fan. Perfect, thank you. What about Guillermo and Jose? Microwave? Yeah, microwave is okay, thank you. Uh, what about if we listen to Jose and then we listen to Susie? Uh, in my case, teacher, uh, I didn't see anything. Okay, thank you. Susie, what about you? I'm sorry, teacher, but I mm, didn't see two. Okay, no problem. <laughs> okay, creo que sí, no. Bueno, se están acostumbrando todavía a mi metodología, ¿verdad? Así que, bien, aquí tenemos esto. Household devices and appliances. As you can see here, we have different types of 
um, articles that we use at home, okay? Like coffee maker, blender, mixer, toaster. Creo que están acostumbrados también, ¿verdad? A actividades con más, con más tiempo, ¿verdad? A mí me gusta dar actividades que toman tiempo y otras actividades un poquito más rápidas para generar la fluidez en las clases, ¿verdad? Eh, tenemos unos que son bastante útiles. Por ejemplo, electric drill. Here we have a light bulb, a torch, a pressure cooker, microwave. Eh, uno que estuvieron mencionando. Television, obviously, speaker, a clothes dryer. Is different, is different from washing machine, refrigerator. Okay, and so you have the rest of all, okay? We're going to start um, checking the assistant, the assistant list. ¿Verdad? La lista de asistentes la voy a revisar. Mention one of these phrases. Pueden mencionar una de estas frases, ¿ok? Por ejemplo, number one, it's new to me. Number two, it's up to you. It's up to you. Three, it's waste of time. Or in no time. In all days. In place. It's beside the point. In the meantime. In time. In vain. I guess most of these are kind of easy to pronounce. Maybe number two is like very important to mention. It's up to you. De hecho, pueden decir la unidad, it's up to you. It's a waste of time. So, practice one of these. I'm going to call you one by one. And when you listen to your name, you say hi, hello, good evening. And after that, mention one of these phrases. We start with Adi, Beatriz. Hello, Adi. Hello, teacher. Okay, one of these phrases, please. It's new to me. Perfect. Uh, Ana Cristina, do we have here Ana Cristina? Maybe not by the moment. So, Elias, good evening. Good evening. Okay, my friend, one of these phrases. It is to you. It's up to you. It's up to you. Okay, Rivas. Mm -hmm. Rivas. I don't know, Rivas is not here. Okay. Eh, Claudia Marcela. Good evening, teacher. Hello, Claudia. Okay, one of these phrases, please. It's beside the point. Perfect. And Daniel. Yo estoy aquí, perdón. Yo estoy aquí. No me podía Okay, Carlos. Hello, hello, todo bien? Hello, teacher. Good evening. Okay. Perfect, thank you. Can you read one of these phrases, please? It's no time. Thank you. Uh, Daniel Ernesto. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, the number five. Okay. Uh, in all days. Good one. Thank you. Uh, David Emanuel. Good evening, teacher. Hello, uh, good evening. Number six. In place. Perfect. Doris Alejandra. Good evening. Hello, Doris. Okay, one of these phrases. In time. Thank you. Evelyn Karina. Number six. Mm -hmm. Employee. Graciela Saray. Okay, Guillermo Eduardo. It's up to you. Thank you. Jose Andres Perez. Ah, uh, in vain. Okay. John Fuentes, are you there? Yes, good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. 
uh, any num any numbers yeah depends on you mm -hmm. okay um it's night to me okay. it's new to me it's new to me thank you what about katia maria good evening hello in place okay perfect maritza hello hello in no time very nice thank you marvin alexander Okay, Marvin, creo que no te escuchamos. No tienes activado el audio, al parecer. Ajá, Gracias. sí. Ok, ahora sí. Me escuchan ya. Bueno, ahora sí. Eh, good evening, teacher. Eh, voy entrando a clase. Solo hay que escoger una frase. Sí, eh, normalmente para pasar lista siempre me dicen present, good evening, hi. Y después de decir eso, mencionan una palabra o frase de las que yo les enseño al iniciar la clase. Aquí tenemos una lista. Ok. Uh -huh. ¿Cuál sería? Eh, sería present is new to me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marvin. Thank eh, you. Noé Pérez. Hey, present. Good evening, everybody. Eh, in no time. Thank you, Noé. Eh, oh, Gustavo, hello. Hello, teacher. Hello there. Good evening. Good evening. Good all day. Perfect. Eh, Oscar Eduardo. It's up to you. Thank you. It's up to you. Rosalie Hong. Good evening, present. Thank and you. In the meantime. Thank you, Rosalie. So, see. Oh. Good evening. Good evening. In time. Okay, perfect. And we have Teresa Noemi. Maybe not here, Teresa, by the moment. Okay. So, very simple, useful phrases. I consider that one of the most useful phrases are this. In my opinion, for example, number two, it's up to you. Very useful. Son de esas frases que a veces uno busca cómo decirlas y, y pues, esas son. Uh, it's waste of time. In no time. Uh, it's beside the point. In the case you're talking about some things that are not so important, you can say mm, it's beside the point. And in the meantime, yeah, in time. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. So useful phrases. Maybe later we can talk about uh, some of these phrases. Okay. Before we continue, here we have a speaking activity. Uh, Marvin, uh, no estuviste ayer, ¿verdad? Pero si te, te, te comento esto. Durante eh, las mañanas, yo siempre envío una actividad oral, speaking activity. En este caso, la pregunta es la siguiente. If you had a business, what would it be? Si tuvieras un negocio, ¿cuál sería? Y aquí, eh, detalle. ¿Qué producto o servicio? ¿El nombre del negocio? ¿Si sería familiar, individual o una asociación? ¿Okay? Entonces, el objetivo de eso es que tú prepares la respuesta para el momento de la clase, tener ya una idea que responder. ¿Ok? Si okay. quieres, te puedo preguntar al final para que tengas una okay, idea de cómo uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Ok, it's a pleasure. Um, let's see, do we have some volunteers, voluntarios para comenzar? Very simple. Uh, you can talk like briefly if you want. Brevemente si ustedes quieren. Noé, thank you, my friend. Ok. Ok. Then, so... The question is right. Um, if you have a business, what would it be? My yeah. answer could be my business name is GC Performance. The principal function is automotive mechanic. So I fix cars, motorcycle, everybody that has an engine. <laughs> oh, that's and, perfect. Yeah, and it's an individual business. 
Thank you. Oh, wow. Very detailed. Yeah. And as we have a lot of cars and, and motorcycles, you know, that's uh, what all those machines, there's always work. Siempre trabajo. Thank you, Noah. Very good yeah. job. We go with Thank Daniel you. and then John. Okay. And um, if I had a company, yeah. I would like a, a rental car. Rent car. It, it will be calling net of rental cars and hmm. it will be family business. Yeah, very nice rent car. Yeah, I agree with that. Sounds really good. Neto rent a car. Nice. We go with John now. And then Rivas. Hey, teacher. Hey. In my opinion, the business world be a mini family market. In the mini market world, find fruits, soft drinks, sweets, hamburgers, and money orders. Mm hmm Sounds really good, yeah, and because it's familiar business. Thank you, Rivas. John, are you ready? And then Susie. Yes. Um, my answer, um, I would like a business of clothes service. Um, I would put a sky with clothes. Uh, you can sell websites storage and virtual servers and serious families business okay very interesting related to technology and all those stuff thank you john very nice we go with susie and rosalie okay my business will be um even organizer and it will be called susie's dreams and and it will be a family company. I will use very uh, various materials, such as balloons, ribbons, and others. Okay, sounds really interesting because remember, people sometimes don't have time to organize events. People have problems organizing events, so you can provide that service. Thank you, Susie. Sounds very very nice. Rosalie and Adi. Um, my business is what would be a mini market of fruits and vegetables. Um, it would be a family business. And the name would be Jose's Little Farm. Yay, hey, Jose's Little Farm. Very nice because you will sell uh, vegetables, right? and fruits, all oh, natural products mainly. Thank you, Rosalie, very nice. And we go with Adi and then Claudia. Okay, teacher, my business will be personalized class or class at home. My business will be called, called Rolling School. Mm -hmm. uh, my business individual. Oh, very nice, yeah. And because you don't need too much material it will be like very well you will count with a lot of incomes few materials and providing a service thank you Adi. i like it and we go with claudia and guillermo okay teacher and my business will be with my brother uh, and we make popsicles uh, for events it's called a yellowcas, and they were our popsicles that have different uh, sauce, sauce, a uh, lemon, and are served are at piñatas, birthday parties, and baby showers, etc. Oh, very nice! Yeah, for specific events, special. Well, you could take into account the different event, but some specific yes. are okay, Claudia. Thank you. Guillermo y terminamos con José, la primera ronda. Después vamos con los demás. Eh, más adelante. Guillermo, please. Good evening, teacher. Uh, Hello oh, there. Well, uh, I already have a family business. Nice. Uh, selling cheeses and household things. Okay, very nice. How, may, uh, how much time have you been in that business? Uh, around 
10 years. Oh, very nice. And so far, it goes good, right? No problem. Yes. Perfect. Congratulations, Guillermo. Thank you. Nice, because that's real. That's part of, of your, your reality. That sounds even better. Thank you. And Jose, Andres. Um, hello. Good evening, You're there. teacher. Uh, in my case, if I had a business, it would be maybe a skate shop, right? I can sell skateboards, wheels, trucks, shorties, right? Shoes, gloves, things like that, right? That kind of stuff, you know, or, okay. or a coffee shop, like in another country, right? You know, that's it. I guess, I guess both uh, businesses sounds really good. Remember that coffee is for adults mainly, and the other that is clothes and all those stuffs, maybe for youngs, teenagers, but it could be a good idea. Thank you, Jose. Very nice. So, uh, Thank you for all your answers. Remember that this is like something imaginary, but some of you already have business. So that's really positive. But mainly in the bottom of our hearts, we always wanted to have a business. Siempre en el fondo de nuestro corazón siempre hemos querido tener como un negocio. So maybe we have an idea. We have talked with friends. We have talked with some family members. And we have mentioned this. Okay, we move to this. Oh, sorry. Yesterday, we were talking about different forms to ask, how are you? How are you doing? How are you feeling? How, how yeah, how do you do? And also, we started to say, bien, fantastic, terrific, awesome, great. Um, different forms to say, bad, for example, unlucky miserable terrible but also here we have different forms to say más o menos hay diferentes maneras para decir más o menos here in Salvador we especially say de volada dos que tres so that's part of our vocabulary but in English we have mainly three we can say more or less this is literally más o menos literalmente significa más o menos more or less we can say so-so, aunque un poco trillado, but yeah, it can apply. So-so, or you can say, mm, not bad. For example, somebody asks you, how are you feeling? Mm, not bad. How are you doing? So-so. So, that's part of the answers. And here we have this. Eh, me gustaría que si anotaran esta. Very important. Ya estudiamos esta. It's up to you. Depende de ti. Okay. Pero también podemos decir, depends on you. In my opinion, I like depends. No solo porque se parece al español, sino porque es más formal. Depends on you or it's up to you. If you are talking about a meeting, y hablan de, de una reunión, uh, for example, what time is the meeting? Mm, depends on the people. Ah, depende de las personas. Depends on the boss. Depende del jefe. Okay. So depends on, es, depende de ciertas circunstancias o de una persona. Okay. So, now we have studied different forms to ask how are you, different forms to say bien, different forms to say bad, different forms to say más o menos, okay? Well, now we continue with this, and tomorrow we're going to study some other phrases. Well, here we have a conversation between Aaron and Sam, very simple. The new material just arrived in the morning. Tell Max that he has to store everything. Where does he have to store the boxes? He and Ivan, or también puede decir Ivan, he and Ivan have to store them in the warehouse. Okay, but there are many boxes. Can they use the lift? They have to use the lift. But ask and tell the secretary first. She's going to say they can use it. Then I'm going to tell Max and Ivan what they have to do. Very simple to understand. Fácil de entender. Voy a sorrear algunas palabras. 
para hacer énfasis. Mm. Tell some other. Si ustedes consideran que hay otra un poquito complicada, me dicen. O oh, no tanto complicada, pero sí confusing. Has to. Yo, store. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Has to. Ok. Has, Has to. to. Ok. Yeah. Has to. Ok. So, the new material, como la canción de Madonna, Material Girl. Ok. The new material just arrived. Utilizamos la de because it's a regular verb. Just arrived. No, ar arrived. Con de nada más. Arrived. Mm -hmm. And he has to store. ¿Verdad? No digamos store. No. Store. And then warehouse. Bodega. Ok. Um, yeah. Secretary first. A veces decimos first, pero es first. Ok, we're going to practice this conversation. And remember to sound like very real. For example, where does he have to store the boxes? Que suene la pregunta como bien acentuada. Um, por ejemplo, ok, but there are many boxes. Can they use the lift? And so, and I guess you already have the material. If not, maybe Susie or some, y nos estuve enviando las capturas. Creo que eso siempre es bastante útil. Send screenshot. Okay. Vamos a ver entonces quién nos puede enviar la captura de pantalla. Screenshot, please. And I'm going to organize the breakout rooms. Y vamos a practicar un par de minutos. Luego vamos a seleccionar dos, two or three teams para que puedan, pues, comentarnos acerca de Thank you very much, John and Susie. Ah, antes que nada, John, me habías dicho que el día de ayer no podían compartir, ¿verdad? Yes. Ok, déjame revisar. Ah, aquí está. Okay. Vamos a intentarlo entonces, okay? See you in a couple of minutes, so un par de minutos, then we have some participations. See you in a couple of minutes, my friends.
Okay, we're going to continue and let's see some volunteers. Maybe we can have two teams. Con dos equipos que pasen sería pues bastante bien. You tell me if you want to participate with your partner. Okay, Guillermo, who was your classmate? Was Noé. Okay. Noé, are you there? I don't know if Noé is here. Let's see. I guess not by now. Okay. Noé and Guillermo, please. Aaron and Aaron and Sam. Okay. Please. The new material just arrived in the morning. Tell Max that he has to store everything. Where does he have to store the boxes? Um, he and Ivan have to store it in the warehouse. Okay, but there are many boxes. Can they use the lift? They had to use the lift, but ask and tell the secretary first. She's going to say they can use it. Then I'm going to tell Max and Ivan that they have to do. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe we can listen to some other. I'm going to select this. Maybe Katya. Can you help me, please? Okay. And your partner is? David. Mm, okay, David. Okay. Aaron okay. and Sam. Okay. Can you see? Yeah, can you see? Okay, okay. The new material just arrived in the morning. Tell Max that he has to store everything. Where does he have to store the boxes? He and Ivan have to store them in the warehouse. Okay, but there are many boxes. Can they use the lift? They have to use the lift, but has and they tell the secretary first. She is going to say they can use it. Then I am going to tell Max and Ivan what they have to do. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, my friends. Now let's move to four questions. And um, it is very simple. Here we have uh, four sentences. In, in each sentence, we have two options. For example, have to, has to. Doesn't have to or has to and so on. I need you to read and you tell me, well, some volunteers, if we complete. If we don't have volunteers, I'm going to select some people. Okay, so take a look and try to select at least two options. Vamos a ver si seleccionamos dos oraciones o uno. Volunteers, we have to select one of the two options in bold, lo que están en negrita. Okay, for this, maybe we're going to have... Maritza. Okay, Maritza, select one number. And then we go with Oscar. Number one. Okay, number one. Let's go. Max and Ivan have to store boxes. Yeah. Matt and Ivan have to store boxes. Se utiliza have porque es plural. Thank you. Okay, we go with Oscar. And after Oscar, we're going to listen. Gustavo. Number four, the secretary have to say that. Okay, the secretary has, tercera persona, okay, has to say that they can use the lift. Okay, thank you. We go with Gustavo and then we go with Claudia. Number three. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sam, Sam, Sam doesn't, doesn't has to help. 
Ok. Casi. Vamos a utilizar Sam doesn't have to help. Ok, but very nice. And we, ho we go with Claudia with number two. Could you help me, please? And Aaron doesn't have to help start the boxes. Ok, Aaron doesn't have to. Uh -huh. eh, y aquí también tenemos, ¿verdad? Has to. Cualquiera de las dos opciones está gramaticalmente correcta. Tú dices, doesn't have. Ok. No problem. I'm going to show you. Te voy a mostrar. El have y el has. En un momento. But. Teacher, I have a question. Uh, Dime. Why, why the tree? ¿Por qué, no, ¿Por qué no es has to? La tercera. Permítame. La que dice Sam doesn't have uh -huh. to. Doesn't ah, have muy to. bien. Good ¿Por question. qué no es has to? Buena pregunta. Good question. Aquí lo que tenemos es que cuando utilizamos un negativo, when we use negative, vamos a utilizar siempre el verbo en su forma original, ¿ok? Por ejemplo, si decimos he works at night, si le hacemos la negativa sería he doesn't work at night, ¿ok? Entonces esta es de acá, ya no se la ponemos acá. Porque como tenemos el auxiliar, el doesn't, entonces el verbo debe ser en la forma original. De igual manera, sería el have y el has. Por ejemplo, he has English class. La negativa sería he doesn't have English class. ¿Ok? El has solo se lo utiliza en afirmativo para tercera persona. Para ser negativo o pregunta, utilizamos okay. el verbo original, la base, la forma base. Ok. okay. That's it. Aunque yo sé que también hace sentido el doesn't has, ¿verdad? Porque utilizamos el has para tercera persona, pero no, sería doesn't have. Ok. We're Thanks. going to check some examples. Ok, perfect. Ya vamos a revisar otros ejemplos más adelante. Let's move now to, vamos ahora con some worksheets que son hojas de trabajo. Let's listen. Como yo les dije, one of my objectives is to expand your vocabulary, is to expandir, es expandir tu vocabulario. I know that you already know the words, but we have to exercise our brain using the vocabulary that we know. Hay que ejercitar siempre el tema de, 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 pues de vocabulario, ¿ok? So, we're going to work with opposites. Opposite. Aquí no es que van a... Es, tienen que match, tienen que unirlo. Mm -mm. We have to write, ¿ok? So, take a look at this. Tenemos algunos que son un poquito fáciles. And some other that are kind of difficult. I'm going to give you a couple of seconds. Le doy un par de segundos para que veamos cuál es el contrario, el opuesto de beautiful. El opuesto de cheap. Que es cheap, es barato. Obviously. El, el opuesto sería car. Right? And so, I'm going to give you a couple of seconds. Le doy un par de segundos. Y luego me da, let's listen to some participations. Vamos a escuchar un par de participaciones.
Okay, let's listen to some of your opinions about this, volunteers. Here we have 14 words. Remember that sometimes uh, we have more than one option, más de una opción. So, if we don't have volunteers, si no tenemos voluntarios, vamos a ver acá si nos apoya. Maybe we can have the participation of Daniel. And after Daniel, we're going to have Susie. What number, Daniel? Let's try. Vamos a intentar. The number 12. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. Ugly. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Uh, Susie and David. Susie? Not available. Okay. Susie's not here. What about David and Marvin? Okay, David. Okay. Uh, one number. Uh, no, number one. Mm -hmm. Dry. Wet. Thank you. And we go with Marvin and then Katia. Number four. Fast and slow. Okay, thank you. We go with Katia and um, Guillermo. And number three, interesting and dull. And what is the opposite, I'm sorry? Dull? Um, I don't know. Dull. dull. Aburrido. Uh-huh. Boring. You can say boring as well. Or you can say the other word, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. Uh, Guillermo and John. Cheap. Uh, expensive. Um, John. Thank you. John number H. John Old. Perfect. We go with Doris and then add. Doris, are you there? Adi, and then Rivas. Let's listen if you're there. Okay. Um, number 14, happy, mm -hmm. sad. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Number six, okay. small, big. Okay, small. Okay, puede ser big, puede ser large también. Thank you. And we go now with, let me check who else, Rosalie and Evelyn. Okay, Rosalie, here I have some other. We have number two, five, seven, nine, eleven, mm -hmm. thirteen. Number seven. Four. Okay. Thank you. And here we have also Evelyn. And then uh, here we have Noe. Okay, Evelyn. Maybe not available. Noe, please. And then Oscar. Okay. What number? So uh, the number um, five. Mm -hmm. The positive is slim tie. Okay. Slim es des delgado. Uh, could be, I don't know, fat. Yeah. yeah, could be. It can apply. Thank you. Okay, Oscar and then Jose. Uh, tall, mm -hmm. short. Let me see what number. 13. 13. Tall, yeah, could be short. Thank you. Okay. Jose and then John. Uh, heavy weight. weight okay, yeah. We here we have heavy. Mm -hmm. You say weight. Weight. Do this as I see. Weight. Like heavy weight. Okay. También otra opción podría ser light. Algo liviano. 
because heavy is pesado. Okay, thank you, John. And after John, we're going to have long mm -hmm. 11, long, short. Yeah, short applies to. Okay. And in intelligent, we can say full or we can say dumb. Okay. Okay. Perfect. We complete these opposites and let's move with another. Here we have these exercise as well. Talking about affirmative uh, in simple present tense. If you notice here we have eight sentences and uh, he, we have to match. Tenemos que unir. We have two columns, dos columnas. Vamos a unir, okay? I'm going to give you a couple of seconds. Let's do a couple of seconds and then we continue. Okay, let's listen to some of you. I guess you already have your sentences. Let's listen. This time, maybe we have Susie and Doris. I don't know if you are active already. Okay. Mm -hmm. Please. Uh, number one. Number one. My car, uh, my car goes very fast. Okay, that's nice. My car goes very fast. Yes, I get it. It makes sense. Thank you. Doris now, and after Doris, we have Rosalie. Ya, teacher, oh, primero Doris. Okay, permítame. Hola, hola. Tuve problemas con mi internet. Lo siento. Katia, ¿puedes escucharme? Vamos a hacer una prueba. Yes, teacher. Thank you very much. Perfect, perfect. No sé con quién me había quedado. Sí, con Doris. Rosalí. Ok, Rosalí. Yo te digo Rosalí. Rosalí. Ok, thank you. Please. Number four. Mm -hmm. Their parents are from Italy. Ok. Thank you, very nice. And maybe we can have some other participations. Maybe can we can have Noé and then David. Okay, Noé. Okay, number eight, our teacher speaks French. Thank you, David. And then Oscar. Number seven, my job is in Rogue Street. Okay. 
Could it be? Thank you. Okay, we go with Oscar and Daniel. His dog is three years old. Mm -hmm. Okay, very nice. And here how old can tell us Daniel me parece verdad? And then John. Number three, our, our house is very long. This very, okay, thank you. John. Y lo vamos a dar la otra Guillermo de la siguiente que viene. Okay, John. Your your television is broken. Okay, your television is broken. Is broken. Okay. Tenemos acá your hair. Okay. For me, is very long. It's very long. Very long. Okay. Maybe we can have in our house. Our house. My job. My job is boring. Mm -hmm. My job is boring. That's okay. My job. My job. What number seven? Yeah. My job is boring, but if you notice, um, it can be applied. Pueden ser aplicadas yeah. otras oraciones, right? So that's it. Perfect. Perfect, my friends. And we continue with the questions. Vamos con la pregunta. <laughs> if you had a business, what would it be? What product or service? Name the business, familiar individual, or association. Please, the rest of volunteers. Vamos a ver el resto de lo que no han pasado. Because some of you already presented your idea. I like the businesses. Me gustaron los, los negocios que escuché. But we have some other options, right? For example, eh, Katia, Maritza, eh, Oscar. Okay. You have also David, Doris, Evelyn. Okay. Let's listen to some of you. What business? Okay. Um, okay, my business should be an um, Asia type coffee shop. Mm -hmm. And the dessert and um, coffee serve in a cute way. <laughs> yeah, and, that's very important. And the name should be Sakura Koshiten, which is like. Right. It in sounds like Japan. Japanese or something yes. like that, right? Okay. Um, shall be a family business. Okay. Perfect. Very nice. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Katia. Okay. What about David and Elias? Okay, teacher. Uh, I will start a family business. Sell of cell phone charge and computer accessories. The name of my company uh, will be Variedades AC. I will give cheap price and quality service. Okay. Sounds really interesting. Thank you. Very different from other products, if you notice. Thank you, David. Okay, and uh, we go with Elias and then Doris. Hi, teacher. Hello. If I had a business, I would sell sportwear. The name of my business will be Charlie Sport. Sales of Sporting Goods. And I will be a family business. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Selling some other products. Okay, good. Doris and then Evelyn. Okay, Doris, are you ready? Okay, if Doris is not ready, let's listen to Evelyn. Okay, if Evelyn is not ready, then we go with Maritza, please. I would like to have a family business, like a restaurant. It's nice to be the favorite. Mm -hmm. Restaurant. Okay. Very interesting. 
I like it, Maritza. Thank you. What about um, Oscar and Gustavo? If I if I had a business, uh, would it be in an association with my friends? And would it be a car wash? The name of the car wash will it be the faster car wash. Okay, yeah, it's very different, Travis. Thank you, Oscar. What about uh, Gustavo and then Marvin? Hello, teacher. Hello there. My, my, my business will be a sport, flooring and accessory store. I will be a family business. The, the name will be the footballer store. Mm -hmm. We offer a sport wear, wear for the Wally family, soccer balls, Sport choose. Okay, I like it. Sounds really interesting, Gustavo. Thank you for sharing. Marvin, are you ready? I don't know if Marvin is ready. Okay, maybe not. Right. Okay, let's move. Let's continue with this and. And remember that we were studying countable and in uncountable nouns. Estuvimos estudiando ayer esto, right? Some things that you can count and some things that you cannot count. For example, apple, cookies, carrot, tomato is different than say rice, juice, milk, sugar, okay, soup, um, salt, pasta. Yeah. Una palabra que les quería enseñar. Bueno, especificar. Fíjense bien. Esta palabra se pronuncia así. Y esta otra palabra se pronuncia así. La primera significa jabón. Stow. Y la de abajo significa sopa, stup. So, for example, one example of maruchan. Maruchan es kitchen soup, ¿verdad? Entonces, es, eh, perdón, chicken, kitchen, digo. Tengo hambre. Chicken soup, entonces, este es sopa de pollo, por ejemplo. Pero si decimos soap, significa jabón. Entonces, en el caso que ustedes hablen de sopas, ¿verdad? Digan soup. Porque si ustedes dicen, I love soaps, están diciendo que les encantan los jabones. Okay, imagine if you're talking about food, it sounds like very strange. Okay. Sonaría como bastante extraño. Entonces, esta palabra es como bastante confusa, ¿verdad? La primera, repito, se pronuncia soap, pero se escribe soap. Y la de abajo, se escribe soap, pero se pronuncia soup. Chicken soup. Ok. And let's continue. And we go now with have and has. Ahora vamos con el tema en sí. They have and has. And here we have these sentences. Para que comiencen ya a trabajar también este tema en la plataforma si es que no lo tienen. We're going to work with affirmative and negative. Si se dan cuenta acá, tenemos estas oraciones. Y necesito, I need you to help me reading. Necesito que me ayuden a leer. John, please, could you help me with number one? Affirmative okay. and one negative. Then we go with Maritza. Okay. I had to restore this package. Packages. Packages porque es plural bien raro. Mm -hmm. Packages. And I don't have to restore these packages. Thank you. We go with Maritza and David. They have to take everything to the warehouse. They don't have to take everything to the waterhouse. Thank you. We go with um, David and Guillermo. We have to ask for permission. Permission, we yeah. Don't, we don't have to ask for permission. Thank you. Okay, Guillermo, please. And then we go with Elias. The truck that, uh, driver doesn't have to bring the material. Okay, perfect. 
eh, sería aquí, the, the truck driver has to bring, pero si se dan cuenta aquí tenemos un error. I'm sorry. Este es, es, es un, un, un error prácticamente eh, pues del material. En este caso, creo que el, este es Absolutely. un material. Uh -huh. The truck Absolutely. driver doesn't have tiene que ser acá. Uh -huh. okay. No se puede el doesn't have, ¿verdad? Iría en contra de la, de la gramática, pero es un error que tiene el material. Estoy utilizando el material de, 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 la, de la campaña uh -huh. pasada. El que ustedes tienen aparentemente no tiene esto. Ahí me confirman si tiene este pequeño detalle del have, has. Tal vez John lo tiene en la mano o Katia lo tienen por ahí en la mano. Yes, teacher, sí lo tiene. Tiene el has siempre. Yes. Yes, okay. yes, teacher. Okay, I'm sorry. Es error acá. Voy a mencionar esto. Okay, but thank you. Entonces, tenemos con esto. We have to complete the following sentences using the correct form of have to and the words provided. Entonces, aquí podemos agregar simplemente have to o podemos agregar as to. Si tiene el negativo, ¿verdad? Puede ser don't have to or eh, doesn't have to. Que es lo que tenemos que utilizar. Aquí se los pongo. Cualquiera de esas opciones. Ok. Puede ser el have to, puede ser el has to, si es afirmativo. Si es negativo, es negativo, don't have to, o puede ser, y también aquí está, I'm sorry, doesn't have, doesn't have, ok. We have just four options, cuatro opciones, please. Ya tía también en la, en la última oración lo tiene. Yes, teacher. I'm so sorry. Okay. And let's move with this. Vamos a revisar entonces esto. Complete the following sentences. Okay. So let's see what do we have here. Vamos a ver si le agregamos have to, has to, don't have to, or doesn't have to. Okay. So maybe we have to add, le agregamos eso, and the rest of the, the complement that we have this, okay? What about if we go with Claudia Marcela? Hello, Claudia, can you help us with one of these uh, sentences? Select one. And the company have to buy new material. Okay, perfect. En este caso sería has. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you normalmente tenemos lo siguiente have es para todo, cualquier pronombre menos para las terceras personas las terceras personas sería como he, she ok, And, okay. thank you very nice we go now with um, José Okay, teacher. Hi. <clears throat> Hello. You can hear me very well, right? Yeah, no problem. Okay. I am going to try. And your parents has filled up the containers. Okay, perfect. Como aquí tenemos partners con plural, tendría que ser have to. Okay. Have to. Si solo fuera sin la S partner, si sería tercera persona, pero aquí es have to. Ok, thank you. We go now with John and then Katia. The agent has to uh, the letter, not seeing the letter. Ok, not sign the letter, solo que aquí sería negativo, ¿verdad? Oh. Como es plural, ya les puedo explicar. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Don't have to find the letter. Ya vamos a hacer ejercicio con respecto a eso. No, no se preocupe. Don't worry. Katia, please. And then Guillermo. Okay. And number four, the Mr. Bonilla. 
have to design new models. Okay, thank you. Sería has. Okay, no, no problem. And Guillermo with number five, please. The group uh, has has to has to work until late. Thank you. But it's negative. Como sería negativo sería. Doesn't. Yeah. Doesn't have to. Okay. I'm going to explain something. Para que utilicemos el have y el has. Have significa tener. ¿Qué es lo que tenemos que hacer? Por ejemplo, I have to complete the homework. Tengo que completar la tarea. I have to practice English. Tengo que practicar inglés. Si digo Katia has to repeat after me. Katia tiene que repetir después de mí. Si digo Maritza has to prepare a report. Maritza debe de, tiene que preparar un reporte. Si digo Claudia doesn't have to work tomorrow. Claudia no tiene que trabajar mañana. Entonces el have se utiliza para obligaciones. For something that you have to do it. Or something that you don't have to do it. Cosa que tienes y que no tienes que hacer. Ahora, vamos con lo siguiente. Te voy a explicar. Solo déjenme revisar esto. Le voy a explicar esto. Yo sé que ustedes ya tienen una gran noción de lo que son las terceras personas. Porque ustedes ya estudiaron eso en los módulos anteriores, pero le voy a dar una manera de repasar. Tenemos affirmative y negative. Las terceras personas son las que nos van a dar problema en todo el sentido de la palabra. Porque es un tanto confuso y las terceras personas son he, she, it. Entonces, se dan cuenta que acá tenemos el verbo vivir. I live, you live. Aquí sería he lives. He lives con ese al final. Ahora en la negativa, como ya tenemos el doesn't acá, no le escribimos el lives, la es, simplemente live, miren, el verbo normal. Por eso es que yo les decía que en el caso del, no sería el has, sino que el have. Ahora, ¿qué son las terceras personas? Ok, las terceras personas tenemos acá. Este es la primera persona del singular, segunda persona del singular, tercera persona del singular, primera persona del plural, segunda persona del plural y tercera persona del plural. Ahora nos vamos a enfocar en las terceras personas del singular. Y otra otras palabras pueden ser terceras personas. Fíjense bien. En lugar de he, she, it. En lugar de decir Katia y John. Puedo decir también, miren. Company. Es tercera persona. Mother. Es tercera persona. Partner. Es tercera persona. Todos esas son terceras personas. ¿Por qué estamos hablando de la compañía, de la mamá, del compañero? Un car es tercera persona. ¿Ok? Entonces, cuando utilizamos el, la, esas terceras personas como sujeto y con un verbo, le vamos a agregar S. O en este caso que estamos utilizando el have y el has, vamos a utilizar has. ¿Ok? Ahora, ¿qué sucede si yo a uh, que es tercera persona, le agrego S. Deja de ser tercera persona. Ya no voy a utilizarlo como tercera persona porque es plural. Estamos hablando de los carros. Mamá, que es tercera persona, le digo, ah, mi mamá, my mother eh, cooks, my mother is intelligent. Pero si hablo de madres, ya no es tercera persona. Estamos hablando de de las mamás, ellas cocinan, ellas son inteligentes, ellas son importantes, ¿ok? 
Espero que, que se vaya entendiendo este, este punto, porque la tercera persona no siempre va a ser he, she, it, sino que puede ser company, mothers, partner, car. ¿Ok? Entonces, necesito que hagamos algo. Vamos a hacer un ejercicio. Búsquenme una palabra que sea tercera persona y luego me ponen un guión y me lo van a hacer plural. Aquí hay un montón de ejemplos. ¿Qué otros ejemplos son de terceras personas? Los objetos que les enseñé al inicio de la casa. Kitchen, stove, eh, blender. Todas esas son terceras personas. Ya, pero si le agregamos eh, la S, se vuelve plural y ya no es tercera persona. Vamos a poner un ejemplo. Este es mi ejemplo. Chair, chairs. ¿Ok? Necesito que me enfoquen un objeto, ¿verdad? Puede ser jefe, puede ser carro, puede ser bicicleta, lo que sea. Si es singular, es tercera persona. Si es plural, ya no es tercera persona. ¿Ok? Vamos a captarlo. Ahí escribe un ejemplo en el chat de Zoom. Thank you, Daniel. Very nice. Vamos a ver los demás. Incluso puede ser un familiar, por ejemplo. ¿Ya? Yeah, no problem. Puede ser una idea abstracta. Ok, I'm going to give you a couple of seconds. Te doy un par de segundos. Ok, 30 minutos y terminamos la clase. Vamos bastante bien. Let's see. Yes. Table, tables, computer. Bien, Adi. Solo en este caso, fíjate que ese es un sustantivo irregular. Es bien extraño. Para decir niños, es, 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 es un tanto diferente. Sería así. Porque es un sustantivo irregular, porque nosotros conocemos esto, ¿eh? Car, cars. Pero en el caso de decir ma mouse, es eh, ratón. Pero para decir ratones, decimos mice. Para decir man, es hombre. Para decir hom hombres, decimos men. Son sustantivos irregulares. Es bien extraño, ¿verdad? Entonces sería child, children, pero la idea es perfecta. Perfect, teacher. Thank you. Thank you to you, Adi. Ok, very nice. Pencil, stretch, stretch. Yes. Bueno, ya captaron. Ya captaron terceras personas y lo que son plurales. Ok, very nice. Ahora vamos a trabajar con family members. Vamos a trabajar con miembros de la familia, si ustedes quieren. ¿Cómo lo vamos a hacer? Lo vamos a hacer de esta manera. Podemos decir, fíjense los ejemplos que podemos utilizar. Sé que es algo raro, pero tomando en cuenta que tenemos padrastros, podría funcionar. 
Os, podemos decir, miren, my father has to, my fathers have to. Notan la diferencia. My father has to, my fathers have to. Voy a poner otro ejemplo. Ahora, ¿qué palabras podemos utilizar? Teacher, yo no quiero utilizar miembros de la familia, ¿ok? Podemos escribir voz. Eh, podemos decir, por ejemplo, partner. Vecino. Oli. Teacher. Assistant, supervisor, coordinator, eh, y así sucesivamente. ¿Ok? Puede ser cualquier miembro de la familia, o puede ser cualquiera de esas palabras, o ustedes pueden inventárselas. What's the point of this activity? ¿Cuál es el punto de esta actividad? Necesitamos utilizar el has to y el have to. Hay que diferenciarlo. Aquí están los ejemplos, ¿ok? afirmativo en este caso vamos con afirmativo acabo de enviar el ejemplo en Zoom en el chat de Zoom please escríbanme ustedes aquí les dejo estos ejemplos if you want pueden tomar alguno de estos ejemplos y no pueden tomar los propios perdón de ustedes yo voy a seguir escribiendo That are, we can use a lot of examples. No lo escucho, teacher. No lo escucho, teacher. No, teacher.
vamos a ver ahora a John, Katia, hoy sí se escucha. Sí. Yes, Thank you. Very Thank good. You. Thank you, my friends. I'm so sorry. Uh, let's start with El Has, has to Adi and then Katia, please. Adi, are you ready? Si no está Adi, entonces vamos con Katia. Ready, Katia. teacher. Thank you, Adi. Please, you start with your example. Um, my teacher. My teacher. Mm -hmm. My teacher has to. My teachers have to. Perfect. Katia and Guillermo. Okay. My uncle has to. My uncles have, have to. Perfect. Guillermo and Rosalie. Rosalie. Okay. My supervisor has to. My supervisors have to. Perfect. Rosalie, Daniel. My company has to. My company has to. Perfect. Uh, Daniel, Noé. My coordinator has to. My coordinators have to. Perfect. Noé and John. My manager has to. My managers have to. Perfect. Sí, solo le faltó una S en el ejemplo, pero lo pronunciaste bien. Thank you. John and Oscar. My cousin have to. My cousins have has to. En plural sería my cousins have. Mm -hmm. My cousins have. Okay. My cousins have to. Yeah. Thank you. Oscar and Adi. My brother has to. My brothers have to. Okay, thank you. Uh, Elias and Maritza. Okay. My friend has to. My mm -hmm. friends have to. Okay, my friends. Yeah, thank you. Maritza and Claudia. My classmate has to. My yes. classmate has to. Perfect. Uh, Claudia and Elias. And, <clears throat> and Rivas. My grandmother has to. My grandmothers have to. Thank you. Rivas and Gustavo. My, my cousin has to. My cousins have to. Okay, perfect. That's it. Thank you. And Noé. Gustavo. 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 Yes, I'm okay. sorry, Gustavo. My sister has to work on Friday. My sisters have to work on Friday. Perfect. Para... Vamos a ver entonces. Thank you. We continue. Vamos con... Let's move to this. Okay. We're going to have another listening. Vamos a tener un listening, así que... Uh, I recommend you to have your pen or pencil, take notes, the words or phrases that you can listen, so you can tell me later what you understood, que entendieron, que captaron, what you identify, okay? Teacher, I have a question. Please, John, adelante. Um, uh, how uh, can, can also be used to... A ver. Sí. Yeah, you a can ver use. y tener, ¿verdad? Sí. Es okay. Yes. Ya te comento. Eso se puede utilizar principalmente. You can use it in present perfect. I have play. You can say, I have played soccer for 20 years. Yo he de haber, yo he jugado fútbol por 20 años. In that case, you can, you can talk about uh, that verb. Eso sería un auxiliar del haber. Yeah, but not in simple present. It could be applied for present perfect, past a perfect, y así sucesivamente. Con, los, con las oraciones de perfect, por ejemplo. He has 
work as waitress things ella ha de haber ella ha trabajado como mesera desde el 99 she has worked as waitress since 1999 okay so in those cases you can use have or has como a ver. Okay, John. Okay. That could be. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure, my friend. Okay, let's listen this 19 minutes and we finish. Okay. And let's listen what we have here. Okay. I'm going to play this audio two times. Two besalomas, two times. Just in case you want to uh, write more words or phrases. At about 11 o'clock, my car arrives and takes me to the studio, which is about 10 miles outside the city. I meet the members of the band and we drink a cup of coffee together and talk about the ideas we have for the day in the studio. We never start working in the studio until about midday. Usually, we begin with the problems of the previous day. At about 3 in the afternoon, we stop for lunch, but sometimes we continue recording if we have some good ideas. Let's listen one more time. At about 11 o'clock, my car arrives and takes me to the studio, which is about 10 miles outside the city. I meet the members of the band and we drink a cup of coffee together and talk about the ideas we have for the day in the studio. We never start working in the studio until about midday. Usually, we begin with the problems of the previous day. At about 3 in the afternoon, we stop for lunch, but sometimes we continue recording if we have some good ideas. Okay, volunteers for this, maybe you, I guess it was kind of easy, not so complicated, right? Uh, Guillermo, yeah, tell us. Mm, at 11 o'clock, the car arrived. Mm -hmm. Very nice, the car arrives. Thank you. Claudia. Um, He says at the 3 p.m., have lunch and then recording. Uh, recording again and have good ideas. Yeah, 3 p.m. Okay, he has lunch. Good. Okay, who else? Who else? Who else? If not, I can ask as well. Maybe we can have Marita and then Susie. Uh, in the afternoon, have a lunch. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, what about uh, Susie and then Rivas? Maybe Susie is not available, so we go with Rivas. And then we go with Noé. Okay, Rivas. At the about uh, 7 o'clock, my car arrived in a studio in the city. Copy coffee together, working in a studio. Thank you very much. Very nice. Noe, what about you and then Jose? He said that they prepare a cup of coffee with their friends. Mm -hmm. That's correct, my friend. Thank you. Jose, what about you? Okay, I hear, I hear teacher that they basically, you know, they, maybe if they have a good idea, they just recording all the time in the studio, right? Chilling, drinking, Maybe in smoking and got a good ideas why and we don't doing that basically just hanging out in a coffee shop or in some places like that. Friends. That's all. Thank you. That's it. Spend time with friends. Yeah, talking and relaxing. Okay, good. And we continue now with this. Yeah, fifteen minutes, and we say goodbye. So in this case, if we compare now. Comparamos ahora eh, the last exercise 
now we can have a better idea. Podemos tener una mejor idea about have to and has to. Okay, but to be uh, very clear and no doubt, we're going to use the same in the chat zoom, the same sentence, but in negative. Example, um, my brother, sería de esta manera. Okay, look at this. I sent the same sentence, but in negative. La misma oración que yo les había enviado en afirmativa, I changed into negative. So, ya en la primera, in the first, I use doesn't have to. Okay, and in the, in the order that is plural, I use don't have to. Okay. I need you to do the same. Necesito que hagan lo mismo. Tomen la misma oración. But now we're going to change into the negative. Right? Remember, the first sentence that it is in third person, you have to use doesn't have. And the other sentence that it's in plural, you use, uh, you use don't have to. Okay? Ya les envié la, I already sent the sample. So I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to do a couple of seconds so that la change a negative, please. Okay, let's listen to some of your sentences in negative. So, the first person to start is Rosalie. Ya no te digo Rosalie. Rosalie and then Guillermo. Please, could you read your sentence? My company doesn't have to. My companies don't have to. Perfect, Rosalie. Thank you. Guillermo and Noé. My supervisor doesn't have to. My supervisors don't have to. Thank you, uh, Noé. And then my, Katia. My colleague doesn't have to. My college doesn't have to. Thank you. And we go with uh, Katia and Daniel. Okay. My uncle doesn't have to. My uncles have done. Have to, sorry. Mm -hmm. Don't have to, thank you. Daniel and Maritza. My coordinator doesn't have to. My coordinators don't have to. Thank you, Maritza and Elias. My classmates doesn't have to. My classmates don't have to. Yes, Elias and Rivas. My friend doesn't have to. My friends don't have to. Very nice. Rivas my and then coach, Adi. My cousin doesn't have to. My cousins don't have to. Thank you, Adi and, non, and Gustavo. My student doesn't have to. 
My students don't have to. Thank you, uh, Gustavo. My sister doesn't have to. My sister don't have to. Very nice. Now I'm going to tell you one detail. Is this. Sometimes we get confused with the apostrophe when we use the word don't. I'm sorry. Remember to use this one. Avoid using this. And this is very important because when you are working in a platform, you can have or you may have problems or difficulties if you don't use the right apostrophe. Entonces, esta es la apostrofe y esta es la tilde. Okay? Be careful with that. Vi un par de ejemplos así utilizando es I know that sometimes is kind of disgusting. Pero la correcta es esta. Okay? Just one tip. In case you have problems with the in case you have problems with the platform or with some other exercises that you have. Remember this, la apostrofe, ¿verdad? No la tiene. Okay, and we have, we are about to finish. Estamos por terminar. Now, if you notice this exercise, ahora, si ustedes notan este ejercicio, now it's kind of, yes, John, you have a comment or question? Sure. Uh, Please. Question. Please, question. go ahead. Could, could you write the structure of the have and the has in, in, in the affirmative, then in the negative in a question? Okay, I'm going to do it quickly. Lo voy a hacer rápido. No problem. Thanks. Yeah. This is... Uh... Let me check. So, it is very important to notice the difference importante pues como notar eh, la diferencia ok con eso terminaríamos seguramente vamos a ver I'm sorry. Has. Voy a copiar. Mm, here are we. Okay, this is the affirmative. Esta es la manera afirmativa, ¿verdad? Entonces, ahí está. We have this. Déjame revisar acá. You have... Sorry. Sí, Vamos a estar aquí, no me está dando dificultades. Si no, les voy a mandar mejor la, la imagen. Ok, John. Okay. I promise you. No problem. Le, le voy a enviar la imagen porque solo nos quedan cinco minutos para terminar. Para, no la voy a enviar en un momento. Ok, la voy a buscar.
y se le envió affirmative, negative, and interrogative, porque está el have, ¿verdad? El has en the question form, ¿ok? I'm going to check the attendance list. Tenemos una última práctica, but we're going to do it tomorrow. Lo vamos a hacer mañana. Ana Cristina is not here. Elías, are you here? Está por acá, ¿verdad, Elías? Mm, si no está Elías. Bueno, he's yo vamos sleeping. a ver. Oh, he's sleeping. Ya está durmiendo. Qué, qué bien, así quisiéramos estar todos. Bien, I'm going to call you one by one. Y este, terminamos. Si no está Rivas, entonces te quedas para Present la sesión teacher. uno a uno. Ok, okay teacher. Very nice. Um, remember to say hi, hello, bye, present, good evening, good night. Ok. Adi Beatriz Reyes. Hello. Present, teacher. Thank you. Ana Cristina, not here. Recuerden no desconectarse hasta que termine. Control lista, please. Ya casi finalizamos. Eh, Elías, sleeping, right? Rivas. Claudia Present teacher. Present. Okay, Rivas. Claudia, Daniel. Good night, teacher. Bye bye. Yeah. Thank you, David and Doris. Present teacher. Good night. Night, Evelyn and Graciela. Well, let's go with Guillermo and Jose. Present, teacher. Present, present, teacher, present. Thank you, thank you very much. John and Katia. I am here. Good night and see you tomorrow, everybody. Tomorrow. Good night, see you tomorrow. Bye bye, my friends. Maritza and Marvin. Good night. Good night. Ok. Noé, Pérez, en Gustavo. Here, I'm alive. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Breath, breathing. Thank you. Eh, Present, teacher. Present Thank you. teacher. Good night. Thank you, my friend. Oscar and Rosalie. Good night. Bye, bye. Ok. Present. Good Thank night. You. Thank you. Susi, creo que ya no se conectó entera. Ok. See you tomorrow, my friends. Pasen buenas noches. Bye, bye. Pero se queda arriba. Bye bye. Bye bye. Have a good night. Hello, Rivas. Uh, everything okay? So, no, yeah. teacher. Okay, perfect. Uh, una consulta uh, you were you were in the same group as the others estabas en el mismo grupo que el resto de lo del módulo yes teacher ok that's perfect well you already know that this is space is especially for uh, practicing for asking for questions uh, if you have some doubts, if you have some difficulties with any topic, you can tell me. You have questions about this? About the difficult, uh, difficult uh, I speak. Oh, okay. Can... No problem. We're going to do something. I'm going to ask you, well, we're going to develop an interview I'm going to ask you some questions. Te voy a hacer un par de preguntas, ¿ok? Ok, teacher. Yeah. And at the end, I'm going to tell you what things you have to improve. ¿Qué cosas hay que mejorar? ¿Ok? No problem. Yeah, Very nice. We start now. Let's see. Let me check this. Ok, here we go. And what's your name? My name is Carlos Enrique Rivas Sanchez. Very nice. How are you? Fine, and you? Um, perfect. Thank you. And tell me, what's your last name? And three, uh, three nine years old. Okay, thank you. And... 
tell me how do you spell your last name? P A R L O S E N R A Q U E R I B A S S A N C H E S. Okay. Thank you. Now tell me what time is it? Uh, 10 o'clock. Thank you. And what's your phone number? Uh, my cell phone number is 718844 Okay, thank you. And what's your occupation? My occupation is I am engineer. Thank you. Now describe two members of your family. Uh, my family uh, is compost, compost. <laughs> mm -hmm. for uh, my mother and my brother and my cousin. Okay, very nice. Thank you. And what about if we, uh, well, you tell me about yourself, whatever you want to say, your personal information, your free time activities or things that you like. You are free to do it, okay? Okay, teacher. Mm -hmm. Cuéntame sobre ti. Tell me about yourself. Uh, I am Carlos Enrique. I am engineer. Uh, my work is in Garbal. Uh, my, my parent is Maria Esperanza Sanchez. I live in Santa Tecla. I practice to soccer and a swim. Okay, thank you. And what's your favorite movie? My favorite movie is Salsa. Okay, and, thank you. And, uh, and, um, the number. <laughs> okay, no problem. Thank you. And, ok, Carlos, eh, estaba viendo que las preguntas básicas las contestaste bien, pero hay cierta confusión en algunas. Por ejemplo, cuando te consulté acerca de tu apellido, what's your last name, me dijiste tu edad. Ajá. Okay. Y otras, por ejemplo, uh, what's your favorite movie, es cuál es tu película favorita. Y creo que me dijiste un género de música. La música que escuché, perdón. Ajá. Ok, no problem, no problem. De ahí está bien. Me dijiste la hora, no problem. Me deletreaste, eh, número de teléfono, tu ocupación. Ya ves, eh, acerca de ti mismo, tell me about yourself, me lo dijiste. Descripción de la familia. Mm, me dijiste también cómo estabas. Entonces, si te das cuenta, en las preguntas... Básicas, estás bien, no hay ningún problema, Carlos, solo que considero que es posible que tú estés intentando traducir literalmente cuando te, te preguntan o te dicen algo, entonces sí. al momento de traducir hay muchas veces que nos van a salir bien las cosas, pero hay muchas veces que no nos van a salir bien por varios aspectos, por ejemplo, uno, nos tardamos más, dos, eh, Digamos que no lo hacemos mecánico y hay que hacerlo un poquito más natural, más mecanizado. Por ejemplo, we can talk about different things. When I say, for example, I like pizza, I like hamburger, I like hot dogs, I like sandwich. No necesitas traducir esas palabras, ¿verdad? Ya sabes que es pizza, ya sabes que es hamburger, ya sabes que es sandwich. Así funciona el inglés. Pero si empezas a decir I like y empezas en todo ese tiempo, se pierden un par de segundos. Y es ahí donde nos confundimos. So, what's my point? I consider that maybe you should have, you should listen more English dialogues or conversations. Creo que te caerían bien escuchar más diálogos y conversaciones. Tu procesión está bien. Vamos a mejorar ciertas palabritas. Pero creo que sí está bien. ¿Te gusta la música en inglés? Me imagino. Yes, con... teacher. Con Joby. Eh, ok. 
says, okay, good example. Remember, I know that you identify the, le the letter, the lyrics, music. So I recommend you to memorize the main part of the songs. Aprendete las partes principales o los coros. That's important. And try to pronounce it because sometimes we are listening, but we don't, we don't practice. We have to practice. It is not necessary to speak aloud, not necessary to hablar fuerte, but practice, practice, and you're going to even acquire more vocabulary. Vas a adquirir más vocabulario, okay, Carlos? Creo que vas bien, vas bastante bien. Pero vamos a mejorar ciertas cosas, okay, Carlos? Eh, ¿Ya viste? Salió bien esta, esta entrevista. Pero vamos a ver más adelante en qué más mejoramos, okay, Rivas? Okay, you have okay. one other question? Otra pregunta que tengas, otra duda? Y a veces en el trabajo quiero practicar con mis compañeros, pero como usted dice, siento que se me olvidan las palabras. Quiero, intento, pero como me corto. Quiero ir más y a veces siento que solo digo lo mismo. Entonces puedes hacer esto. Encuentra temas de interés que no sean los mismos. Por ejemplo, food, colors, movies, sports, animals, free time activities. Una vez, once you have identified topics, una vez que hayas identificado los temas, va a ser más fácil desenvolverte. Porque si lo agarras, va, speaking activities that I send every morning, like las, las actividades de, de, de orales que yo envío. Si te das cuenta, como ya las practicaste y ya estás listo, when we are in class, you participate in no problem because you have prepared it before. Pero si no te has preparado antes, es como que um, estás improvisando. Trata de prepararte un poquito. Si quieres practicar con alguien, habla sobre algo de lo que tú ya tengas una idea de algunas palabras y ya vas a ver que la, te va a fluir más el vocabulario. ¿Ok? Sí, Inténtalo y luego me cuentas. ¿Ok, Rivas? Sí, good evening. Good evening. Pasa feliz noche. ¿Ok? Have a good night, my friend. Good night. 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 Good night.